We're going to start off with Andy Goss, usgoldcoins.com. But Andy is much more than a friend of, of Americans everywhere who are trying to build a hedge somehow against what's coming. And what's coming is the train wreck you are seeing unfold before your very eyes now, those of you who care to look. It's not a pretty picture. Uh, I can't wait to hear what Andy has to say about things. Let me bring you up to date in an economic sense very quickly. The Dow Jones Industrial Averages continue in, as Tim Refat says, cloud cuckoo land. Good luck to all of those people who are about to lose their, well, the thing they sit on. Andy, are you there? Indeed, Jeff. How are you? Fine. <laughs> We'll talk about the merriment at Jekyll Island, where the Federal Reserve gangsters are toasting and high-fiving it and howling at 100 years of raping the United States of America and the biggest theft in world history. With Andy, next, usgoldcoins.com. If you have read G. Edward Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island, you'll know all about the Federal Reserve and the gangsters that put it together even before that. But they're celebrating 100 years, I guess, or they're about of complete control. And they have shorn the sheep over and over and over again. The sheep are no longer able to resist. There's no resistance. If you look at Ron Paul's uh, audit the Fed bill, you remember that one? Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, a majority of the House co-sponsors of the bill. And then when he got over to the Senate... It only took nine senators to bottle it up completely. They don't have to control the whole thing, just the portion of it that matters. The rest of it, they allow the circus to continue. And that is how arrogant that power and money uh, corrupt. Right. And that's uh, what we're dealing with. Arrogant. We, we actually are in a time now where we run out of words to adequately describe. Words have been... Words have lost their impact. We, we almost need to somehow coin new terms for this. But even then, the desensitization right. of the public is, is so profound. What surprises me is that those people who read Creature from Jekyll Island need to really go back and reread it and then ask yourself, why are you a shareholder in this corporation? And if you're holding Federal Reserve notes, yep. well, then that's essentially what you are. You're, you're like a bondholder <laughs> for your... You're Precisely. financing them, so yeah. don't do it. Just don't do it. That's why I've devoted my life to buying and selling treasury money. I don't go for Federal Reserve money. You know, a $50 bag of pennies that were made before 1982 mm -hmm. have $135 worth of copper in them. You know, the Mint is cranking out lawful money. Federal Reserve is cranking out Federal Reserve promises to pay money. It's just not the same thing. A silver quarter... From 1964, we'll buy you a gallon of gas today, about four bucks. A silver dollar, well, goodness, that'll really pay an average worker for an hour, just like it did in 1964. Right, right. These dirtbags know exactly what they're doing. Precisely. It's That's a science. Right. It's not a guess. It's not a, well, let's see if we no. can pull this off. It's an absolute science. Yeah, the most secret science, I think, is what uh, Colonel uh, Archibald Roberts called it. They have created an exact duplicate of the planet Earth in uh, cyberspace and with supercomputers, literally down to everybody who is alive on the planet. Yeah, uh, anybody they, who plays Sim City knows what that's all about. This game that is a peak, if you will, at the simulation power. Mm. And imagine this in a consumer game, you know, for like $70, you can mm. create an entire world. If you think about what they sat in, and put together in 1913, you know, 100 years ago, the system of control that they were capable of then, and then ask yourself if you think their power has weakened from that point. It hasn't. So the QE2 set sail. QE2, folks, in case you don't know, is an ocean liner filled with money on its way mm. uh, to the United States economy. The Fed announced yesterday they are going to spend... $75 billion a month uh, for the foreseeable future. And where are they going to get to this buy, money, Andy? Yeah. And whose money is this that they're going to be spending? And how are we involved and indebted to them to pay them back? And what is this thing called usury? And how are we ever going to get these leg irons off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great system of slavery. It's um, much better than the chattel slavery where you had to actually chain your slave up and you know make him uh, work and feed him. In this instance, you can just let them go, and through usury and interest, uh, 
they uh, don't need concentration there, camps. They got look. It's yeah. a done deal. You're waiting for them to come and stamp you in the forehead or put you in a behind a fence. Um, you know, you're you, you've passed the point of realizing that you are a slave. I mean, that's really essentially what Americans find themselves in a state of slavery where. You get up in the morning, you go out and you ply your trade, and then you come back at the end of the day, you put your money on the table, and the master tells you what you get to keep. He keeps about 35%, the average person's off-the-top money, and then gets another 15 to 18% through user taxes and fees, leaves you with half your money, and then you're not really getting money. What you're getting are chips for the company store, which they create. <laughs> the money doesn't have any substance, yeah. it's not made yeah. of gold or silver. Yeah. And so you're constantly uh, mm -hmm. using something that is increasing in supply and therefore becoming worth less and less. 